I'm going to have a nap. A nap? Take a nap. Yes. Yeah, After that, uh, on uh, 4 a.m., I will uh, I will go to the hospital. To I dentist. see. Dentist. Dentist, yes. <clears throat> well, I hope it's not serious. Is it just a checkup at the dentist, or you have a problem with your teeth? Yes, I have a problem. I cut uh, two uh, of my uh, teeth. I oh, don't no. Oh, I, I don't like going to the dentist. I always hated going to the dentist. I hope it's not too serious and they can you know, fix your problem uh, pa painlessly, without any pain. Yes. I don't know what what is it, what does it mean uh, in English? It's, What's that? Uh, when, you, when you have uh, a pain in your uh, teeth and you want to, to, ah. cut, up, to, cut, to cut the pain. Uh, usually it's it's uh, toothache. Something. <clears throat> it's called toothache. Yes, I know. Oh. Are you mean to get rid of the pain? Yes, to uh, to to end uh, the pain. You go to the doctor and he uh, advises you to cut uh, something, but I don't know what is. Uh, what, I. What is it? Mm, well, it depends. Will he be? Um, he might have to drill. To you know, and then yes. put some. He has to drill and then put a filling. He has to put no. fillings in your teeth in order yes, to. But, but uh, it doesn't good. Uh, to, it doesn't sometimes. Uh, it doesn't uh, good to uh, to fill it. He must cut something, but uh, I don't know. What it means. Really, I'm not sure. Yeah, or he has to put an, an injection. <clears throat> a, a, a needle, a syringe, some sort of, um, you know, which will numb, numb that area with the teeth, ah, huh? or your gums. Yes. But I, I'm not sure uh, what else Something, you can do. Something uh, that feed uh, the teeth. Something that he, that feed, feeds the teeth. Yes. He should cut cut it. He has to cut cut it. Oh. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe when you go to the uh, to the dentist, ask him. He, I'm sure he will know in English what it's called. And then he can probably explain to you because I, I wouldn't know. I don't think it's anything uh, in general that we we say. You know. Okay. All right. Let's let's see. Okay. You. Maybe nerve or no. Yeah. Nerve. Oh, you have to. Bandage. Oh. bandage. Bandage? Bandage? No. If it's nerves, I don't know if he wants to cut the nerves. The nerves will be very painful if it touches any nerves. Yes, nerves. Nerves, yes. Oh, okay. I see. Well, hopefully it's not going to be too painful for you. All right, let's see. We've got Eugene. Welcome, Eugene. And Luca Hi, is back. Hi, Eugene. Teacher. How are you going? I haven't seen you in a long time. Yes, long time no see, right? I'm doing yeah. well. How's How are you? Been? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, working away. And um, okay, Antonio. Hello, Antonio. Hello, hi. How are you going? Very good, thanks. And where are you calling from? Antonio. Italy. Ah, we have two Italians. Yeah, yeah. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Grazie. Yeah, where where exactly are you in Italy? Which um, which city? city? Uh, my my city is small. Uh, near Rome. Near okay, near Rome. I see. And Luca, you were oh, you were in the in the south. You said I remember. Luca. Ah, uh, sorry, teacher. I. Uh, had uh, some problems. Oh, that's problems. okay. Yeah. Are you in the south of Italy? Um, I am in the center. Uh, oh, in the center, that's right. Uh, on the east coast. Uh, the east coast. Is there another Italian? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're Antonio. Yeah, Hi, Antonio. Close. Hi. He lives close to Rome. Yeah, I'm from Pescara. You? Ah, yeah, I know Pescara. 
and it's you? It's beautiful near uh, Rome, uh, Frosinone. Ah, okay. <laughs> nice to meet you. Me too. That's cool. Uh, it's nice to hear two Italians speaking English together. <laughs> <laughs> Usually you would, you would speak Italian, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, and and Eugene, uh, Eugene, you're from uh, from Russia. <coughs> from yes. Russia, yeah. Yes, you're right. Was it from Moscow or? Uh, no, I'm from uh, west, western part of the Russia. It's about one thousand kilometer from Moscow. Oh, that's far. That's very far. Okay, what's the weather like there? Is it warm? Uh, today's shiny, but uh, it's getting colder because of, of fall, but it's okay. Mm, okay. All right, guys. Oh, look, let's let's have a, a brief introduction because we have, uh, you know, Antonio has joined us, and I think it's his first time in my class. So um, let's have a quick intro, just about, you know, 20 seconds. I'll quickly introduce myself. Um, okay. Um, yeah, you know my name. I am uh, Australian, actually. I'm uh, from Australia. Uh, but originally, uh, my parents are from Bosnia and Croatia. So I'm not too far from Italy, uh, you know, <laughs> originally, because it's just across yeah, yeah. the Adriatic Sea, yes. Uh, but yeah, yeah I've, been, I've been in Australia for a very long time, since I was young. And... Um, also, I lived in Germany for almost five years, so I've gathered quite a lot of um, uh, you know, education there and um, experience. And now I'm living in the UK. I've been here since last year. <clears throat> and I'm actually in Northern Ireland, Northern Ireland, uh, which is part of the UK. And um, yes, and actually I also spent two years in Egypt most recently before I came to the UK. So, uh, yeah, that's a bit about myself, guys. And uh, so, Antonio, let me hear something about you. Let us hear something about yourself, like where you're from exactly and um, what do you do? Yeah, uh, I'm a student. Uh, I'm graduated in uh, investigative science. And uh, now I'm here because I want to improve my English because it's... Uh, it's a need for uh, my master in uh, criminology, and uh, I hope uh, enjoy uh, here with you. Ah, I see. That's nice. That's awesome. Very interesting. Okay, thank you, Antonio, for the introduction. Uh, Eugene, uh, sorry, yes. is it Eugeni or Eugene? How can I call you? Eugeni. Eugeni. Okay, Evgeny. sorry. Evgeny. Yeah. Evgeny. Uh, I'm from Russia, and I'm technician by file alarm and security systems. I love to learn languages. At this moment, it is they are English and French. Nice. That's cool. Okay, thank you for the introduction. Uh, Hamoud? Okay, my name is uh, Hamoud. I am, uh, from, I am uh, 29 years old. I am from Saudi Arabia. I'm here uh, to improve my English. Excellent. Okay, thank you, Hamoud. And Luca? Yeah, I am uh, from Italy, and I am uh, 26 years old. Uh, I am. I I would I would to improve my English uh, because uh, I want to to go uh, to work uh, uh, in uh, in Germany. In German? Oh, that's right. Yes, yes. I remember you saying yeah. that. Are you going there soon? September, I think you said. You in September? Yeah, I hope. <laughs> you hope, yeah. Or well, hopefully you, your your wish will come true or your... Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm searching a, a job. I see. That's good. Hopefully you, you, you become successful and you find something that you want. Okay, thank you, Luca. Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, all right, let's begin the class. Our topic is history and culture. Okay, history and culture, and um, <clears throat> let's see. 
our actual um, grammar skill will be comparatives and superlatives. Okay, so I'll, I'll ask you a question just to begin our, our discussion and um, have a little warm up. Who do you like more, Brad Pitt or David Beckham? I'm sure you know both of them, yeah? You know Brad Pitt, the famous Hollywood actor? Uh, and then we have David Beckham, the English football player or soccer player. Now, who do you like more? Maybe <laughs> this is a question that should be asked to a woman, <laughs> since yeah. all of us are guys. But <laughs> I don't know who do you, um, who do you, as, as in character, I mean personality. Uh, for me, I don't know because I don't like football. <laughs> I oh. don't watch, uh, really? Are, and, uh, are, you, are you sure you're Italian? Uh, there, there's, yeah. <laughs> that's you don't too, like uh, football? In, uh, impossible, Italia. That's, uh, I don't like football. <laughs> it's the first time but, I come across uh, an Italian that doesn't <laughs> like football. <laughs> but I, I like pizza and pasta. Oh, okay, that's, that makes it a pass. All right, then. You're Italian, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, you know, I played, when I was in Australia, I played uh, soccer or football for an Italian club there, you know. I played to a quite decent level and in, in the Premier League in Western Australia, and and I, I was playing for an Italian club, and they were, yeah. I mean, it was very rare to come across an Italian that uh, did not play football or was not at any, you know, in any way involved, yeah, either yeah. by a fan or whatever. But anyway, it's not. It's not. It's okay. Uh, since you like, you know, <laughs> pasta and pizza, I, I may, I'll, I'll pass that for now. So, what do you think, Brad Pitt or David Beckham? Who do you like more? I prefer Brad Pitt because you watched... I think uh, I think uh, he's uh, uh, more rich uh, than David Beckham. Uh, and uh, maybe uh, he has uh, more uh, more girls. More girls. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well. Well, I don't know. They're both married. That David. That, um, I think uh, David Beckham is. Um, I don't know. I can say. I can I say uh, when uh, the people is um, uh, no no friendly no. Uh, strange ah, character, he, uh, strange he, behavior. You think he's um, a bit arrogant, maybe? Arrogant. Yeah, yeah, um, yes. Yes, arrogant, um, yes. Thank you. Ah, I see, okay. I, I don't like. <laughs> so you like Brad Pitt more? Yeah, okay. yes, I prefer because Brad of Pitt, that. yeah. I see. What do the other guys think? Uh, Genny or Hamoud? Um, I, I agree with Antonio because uh, Usually I played soccer. I don't watch soccer on TV, mm -hmm. so I think that Brad Pitt. Uh, I like him more than. Than David Beckham. Than David Beckham, yeah. Mm. Also for the same reasons, yeah, because I think David Beckham might be a bit, a bit more arrogant. Mm. Mm, I don't know. I I have no idea any of uh, his. Mm, his features. Or his characteristics. Yes, yes, his characteristics. Mm. Yeah, we can't really say because we don't really know them in person, yeah, but <clears throat> judging from what we do know from the media and, you know, from the interviews that we've seen <clears throat> and uh, the actions that they've done, you know, uh, from the charities, you know, the generosity that they have and, um, you know, how they react to the paparazzi, for example. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, you know, judging by that, we can see which one has a better personality, you know, and uh, we can judge which one we like more. All right. Anyone else want to say anything? Maybe I should have asked <laughs> a different question. Uh, uh, I should have, if I knew that we are going to have a full... A full uh, gentleman's class. I could have asked about two, two ladies or two women. <laughs> but uh, anyways, maybe next time. Maybe next time. <coughs> we probably would have known a bit more. Yeah. 
All right, so let's get into pronunciation. Um, and in this case, now we're going to focus on the vowels followed by the letter R. All right, so the vowels followed by R, the letter R. So there are eight different ways to pronounce a vowel before an R, you know, the letter R. <clears throat> First, we have per. All right, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna keep putting them here for you. Per, that's the first one. Second, <clears throat> we have pa. Okay, pa. Then thirdly, we have pia, or peer. All right. Fourth, we have pair. Okay. Fifth, we have core. Okay. Then sixth, we have <coughs> um, pyre. All right. Seventh. Power, power, okay. And finally, eighth, we have pure. So there's a lot of er, uh, right? <laughs> there's about eight different ways, right? Or eight um, <clears throat> ways to pronounce a vowel before an R. So we have per, par, peer, pair. Paul, Pyre, Power, and Pure. So they all pretty much have a different vowel before the R. Right, so... Can, can, you, can you repeat uh, the first, please? Per. The first one? The first. Per. Yes. The first is Per. You know okay. what I want? Yeah, Per, yeah. <clears throat> like when the cat purrs, you know, the cat is making that noise. Brr, brr. You know, it comes from per. I don't know if you, if you ever had a cat or if you heard a cat uh, per. <clears throat> so, um, let's have a look. So, when adding ER or ER for comparative, many students pronounce it uh, like the word air instead of ER. So when we're having a comparative, like uh, better, you know, I like him better, yeah? Or he is uh, faster. Some students say air, fast air, which is a mistake. You know, they say air, what I'm trying to say is air in So the letter one is is, is is the correct one, E R, not A I R. So they also tend to um, trill the R a bit by letting it flick against the roof of the mouth. Right. So today we'll work to correct the two vowel sounds and smooth out the R. Now I want you to listen to me. I'm going to give you a few words and listen to the difference. Okay. Hair and her. Can you notice the difference? Yeah. Yeah. First is hair, the hair on our head. And then we have her. So hair, her. Okay, now how would you pronounce this word? Bigger. Mm. Yes, bigger. What about this one? Antonio. Stronger. Yeah, stronger. What about this one? <clears throat> Sorry, uh, I forgot a letter. What about this one? 
per again per yeah pair just like air or hair you say pair not per like her yeah excellent okay Hamoud has left us uh, what about this one how do you pronounce this beer mm. not quite Genny what do you think bear yeah it's bear you know the big grizzly bear big animal big brown black animal or the polar bear yes and what about this sir sir yes sir just like her this is her class and sir may I ask you a question okay so basically uh, the R has three basic instructions okay so you have to round your lips when we say her better stronger bigger yeah so you have to round your lips slightly when you say air air you don't you don't have to round your lips as much but in our case because we're using comparatives now like bigger stronger faster you have to round your lips a little bit so er okay and then you push your tongue sideways against your back teeth the molars bigger can you say bigger bigger, bigger. bigger. now do you notice the side of your tongue the two sides of your tongue they're going back against your molars your back teeth so bigger they're like bigger. touching the top you know the top back teeth bigger stronger bigger Fast, faster stronger. yeah you have to say that your 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 tongue almost curls a little bit yeah so the third point is you curl the tip of your tongue either down okay not quite touching the bottom teeth or up both ways are okay not quite touching the roof of the mouth so bigger my tongue goes up when I say bigger yeah so you curl your tongue up a little bit and the back of your tongue the side sorry of your tongue will be touching the teeth at the back so bigger stronger sir yeah, sir, or in our case, we're using comparative. So we say bigger, stronger, faster. Okay, this is how we should uh, position our, our lips and our tongue when pronouncing this, uh, this uh, you know, these vowel sounds before the R. So let's practice a little bit. Um, okay, let me hear you say the sentence. Uh, Jenny, do you want to start? I'll put it in the chat. Uh -huh. My cup is bigger than yours. Excellent. Luca? My cup is bigger than yours. Well done. Perfect. Antonio? My cup is bigger than yours. Yes. Well done. My cup is bigger than yours. And what about this one? Evgeny? Uh, Jill's hair is longer than Jane's. Yes, this one is a bit harder now because we have two a little different, you know, airs. So Luca, Jill's hair is longer than Jane's. Well done, well done. Antonio, Jill's hair is longer than Jane's. Yeah. So and make sure, yes, make sure there's a distinction and a, a distinctive a difference between hair and longer so Jill's hair is longer than Jane's Jill's hair is longer than Jane's well done now hopefully we can remember this this pronunciation yeah when we are having our discussions now so let's get into the actual grammar are there any questions by the way no 
Okay. Okay. Yes. It's pretty straightforward, yeah? I think you guys already know how to pronounce it. I just wanted to uh, give you the actual structure and how to perk your lips and your tongue, where it's, how it should be positioned, and uh, give you an example of how it sounds. So let's have a look at the, these, um, these details. Well. So first, you can use comparatives to compare one, compare one thing to just uh, one other thing. Right? So you form a comparative from an adjective. So usually uh, the adjectives are big, cheap, interesting, good. Yeah. For a one-syllable adjective, this is the construction. So we have the adjective, and you add er. And in some cases, we duplicate the final consonant. So, for example, in our first example, uh, big becomes bigger. See, double G. That's what they're saying. You duplicate that consonant. So, um, also hot becomes double T. Or hot, hotter. So, big, bigger, cheap, cheaper, loud, louder, hot, hotter. Uh, special irregular case. Good, better, bad, worse. So we can't say better or gooder. So this is an irregular case. So the actual word changes now. Yeah, so from good, uh, you say better. From bad, becomes worse. Right. Now for a two-syllable adjective ending in Y. Right, so if the, if the adjective ends in Y, we replace the Y with I, and we add ER. So pretty or pretty becomes prettier. Pretty or pretty becomes prettier. Dirty, dirtier. Silly, sillier. Yeah? Uh, so basically, the Y is taken out, and we put I, E, R. Now, for two more syllable adjectives not ending in Y, okay, not ending in Y, we have uh, we use more before the adjective. So the adjective remains the same. You don't change it, or you know. So all we're doing is adding more before the adjective. So useful will become more useful. When, when using the comparative, yeah? So pleasant becomes more pleasant. Interesting becomes more interesting. Complicated, more complicated. Okay, so these are cases where you have to add more and you can't add uh, ER. You can't say uh, pleasanter or usefuler. You just add more before the adjectives. So when making the comparison, add then after the comparative when you mention both items being compared. So when we talk about both the items that you're comparing, for example, in our case, we have Brad Pitt uh, and uh, David Beckham, right? You have to add this word in the sentence, then. So our new car is bigger than our last. So they're talking about the new car and the last car, or in our case, Brad Pitt and David Beckham, and they, they add them. So bigger than. Uh, this software is more useful than the one made by its competitors or competitor. So more useful than. you got to use them. In the case where you use both the com uh, uh, the comparatives there, this book is more interesting than what I thought it would be. Okay, in this case, you can always also do this. Um, okay, who wants to give me an example? Just like the one we've done now, one of these three. So, 
you use a, 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 an adjective where you're comparing two things. Who wants to try? Welcome, Heidi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Uh, yeah. um, are you aware of uh, the class, what, the grammar? Have you been following in the lobby or are you just uh, joined now without knowing? We're talking about. Comparative, yeah, comparative. Yes, yes, that's yes, right. I know. Okay. Do you want to give us an example of, uh, you know, you, example? a comparative? Yes. Make like an the example. ones. Make an yeah, example. Like, yeah, make an example for us, please. Make an example. Yeah. She, uh, Japanese Shinkansen is faster than a local train. Yes, that's a good one. So the the, the Japanese uh, speed train, I think, the speed train is faster than yeah, it's faster or faster than the local train. Good, good example. So you, she is faster than. But what other adjective can we use? Right, where we have to say more. Give me another one where you can't add er like fast, faster, big, bigger. But what about you can use useful, interesting, and you have to add more before that. Can you uh, think of one? Um, action movie is uh, more interesting than um, romantic movie for me. Ah, that's good, good, good. Excellent sentence. Okay, so I hope you guys are uh, understanding what we're talking about so far. So let's move on. And so secondly, you can use uh, superlatives to compare one thing to a lot of things. All right? So superlatives. For one syllable adjective. All right? Superlatives, when you say, uh, you add EST. So we have the plus the adjective and then you add EST. And here also you can duplicate final consonant in some cases. So big, then we have bigger and the biggest. Yes, uh, a, a, a comparative would be bigger, bigger than, and a superlative would be the biggest. Cheap, cheaper, the cheapest. Loud, louder, the loudest. Hot, hotter, the hottest. Okay? Mm -hmm. In this case, the T is uh, duplicated, just like in the comparative. And there are special irregular cases. Like, again, we don't say the goodest, we say the best. Bad, the worst. So bad, worse, the worst. Okay, guys, so for two syllable words ending in Y, <coughs> we have, um, same as before, we replace the Y with I, and we just add EST. So pretty, yeah, pre uh, prettier, and the prettiest. Dirty, the dirtiest. Silly, the silliest. So for almost syllable adjectives not ending in Y, the most and then adjective. So bef before we had more for a comparative, now we have superlative, superlative and we say most. So useful, the most useful. Interesting, the most interesting. And complicated, the most complicated. Okay. So, who wants to give me uh, a sentence using uh, a, a superlative? So, you can use uh, the prettiest, the dirtiest, the silliest, or even the most useful. I, yes, I try. I, Go ahead. Okay. I am most, yes, I am the most beautiful. Yes, nice. I'm the most beautiful out of all. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Uh, your English uh, uh, is the, the best. Uh, sorry. Okay, uh, Luca. 
uh, I have to repeat. Yeah. Yeah, please uh, go ahead. Um, your English is the best. Yes, that's good. Your English is the best. Good. Okay, any more? Uh, yes. May I say something like this? Uh, my new job is the cushiest job I ever seen. Is the the coolest? Sorry, I didn't understand the word. <laughs> Not uh, cushy. I don't know. Can you, do you, can you spell it for us? Uh, just a second. I... On the in the chat. What's the actual adjective? <laughs> Just a second. Okay. Hmm. Cushy. Oh. American American Army is the uh, the strongest in the world. Yeah, that's good. Ah, so cushy is like. Let me just get back. It's like, uh, like comfortable. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah. So what would be cushy, cushier, cushiest? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe you can say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know how to spell that, yeah? How would you spell it if you say cushiest? Mm. Uh, cushiest. Yeah, how do you spell cushiest? C O S I uh, I E S T. Yeah, excellent. So basically, the Y is taken out, and you put an I, and then E S T. Well done. Uh, yeah, and then Heidi said uh, the American Army is the strongest in the world. Yeah, that's excellent. So you got it. Well done, guys. So let's move on. If I may. Okay, uh, so there are no questions, yeah? Everything straightforward? Okay, let me begin the, uh, the article, the discussion article, and I will give you the link for it in the chat, so you can open it in your own window, if you like. Right, so here we're talking about uh, 10 cool archaeological sites. Okay? 10 cool archaeological sites. And pictured we have the Angkor Wat temple in Cambodia, which was built in the 12th century. Okay, so let's have a look what they say. Alright, archaeologists are scientists that study objects uh, from the past to understand human history. Sometimes they find amazing things. Here's a list of 10 cool archaeological sites from around the world. So we have first the Angkor Wat in Cambodia. A temple built in the 12th century, Angkor Wat meaning a capital monastery, was a temple in the ancient Khmer capital city of Angkor. It is Cambodia's best known tourist attraction and appears on the country's flag. The temple is known for its beautiful architecture and uh, reliefs. Uh, yeah, reliefs. Right? So the second, we have King uh, Tutankhamun's tomb in Egypt. So Tutankhamun was one of ancient Egypt's minor kings, but his tomb is very famous. When Howard Carter uh, discovered the tomb in 1922, it was almost completely undisturbed and filled with treasure. Wow, you can imagine how uh, that discoverer must have felt when he found that tomb. Okay, so thirdly we have the Machu, Machu Picchu Machu Picu in Peru. And that was built uh, high in the Andes Mountains by the Inca in the 15th century. Its exact purpose is unknown. It has been uh, designated one of the 
uh, new seven wonders of the world and is threatened by uh, over tourism. So there's too many people visiting that place. So we'll have a look at shortly. I'm going to go through them one by one. So we have the Stonehenge in England. The entire Stonehenge site was constructed over thousands of years. The reason for building the monument and the construction techniques are still a mystery. That's another wonder. Now we have the Terracotta Warriors in China. The famous army of Terracotta soldiers were created to protect King Shi Huang, the first emperor of China in the 3rd century BC. The statues are life-size and were even given uh, individual features. Pompeii, Italy. When Mount um, Vesuvius erupted in 79 AD, Pompeii was buried under many layers of ash, preserving the city exactly as it was when the volcano erupted. Because so many objects were preserved, archaeologists are able to better understand daily life in the ancient Roman Empire. Okay, Teotihuacan, Mexico. The mysterious city of Teotihuacan laid out in a grid had, had been built and abandoned before the Aztec settled in central Mexico. The Aztec named the site and guessed about the purposes of the buildings, but archaeologists are only now beginning to understand the importance of the temples here. Right. Okay, then we have the Petra in Jordan. Unknown Westerners until its discovery by Johann Ludwig uh, Burckhardt in 1812. Petra was a, a caravan crossroads and the capital of Nabataean Kingdom 2,000 years ago. Today, more tourists are visiting the site, making preservation more important. Moai statues of Easter Island, Chile. The massive statues of Easter Island, called uh, Moai, were carved between 1400 and 1600 AD, out of compressed volcanic ash. Many of these statues are still standing at different sites around the island. And we have the Nazca Lines in Peru. Nazca Lines are giant drawings in Peru's Nazca Desert. The drawings can be seen clearly from the sky, but not the ground. The lines may have religious significance, according to some theories. The drawings depict many different things, such as humans and different kinds of animals. Now, let me go through some of these pics quickly. So this is the very first one, the Angkor Wat. Then we have the King Tutankhamun's uh, you know, tomb. Then we have the skeleton was found at Pompeii. Wow. These are the Terracotta Warriors. And one more we have here, the Easter Island's huge statues are known as Moai. I don't think we can go any further. So, there you go, guys. Any questions? No. Everything's clear. Okay. So, let's get into some of these questions. I'm going to actually give you some questions, and hopefully, you can give me some nice answers. Um, okay. So, let's stick to comparatives and superlatives. So, by the way, welcome, Cecilia. Nice to see you again. Hello, thank you. I had some uh, connection Hello. issues. Okay. I'm glad you got it sorted. Uh, are you aware of what we're talking about? Aware of? Yes, comparative, superlatives, the R sound. Yes, excellent. Okay, so first question Which of these archaeological sites would you like to visit more? For me, Machu Picchu in Peru. Ah. Why would you like to visit that one? Antonio. Yeah, yes. I mean, 
because uh, I think uh, it's uh, uh, it's most amazing. Mm. Let me see where was it. I we have any pictures. I I I, I um. saw Pompeii in Italy. Oh, of course, yes. And, and maybe, maybe after, uh, uh, I think, uh, Petra in Jordan. Yeah, that would be also nice, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so you would like to see the more creature in Peru the most. Yeah, out of all of these, yeah? Okay, what about you, Cecilia? Yes, I've got it open. Uh, I agree with Antonio. I, I, out of uh, the tenth uh, archaeological sites, I would uh, visit uh, Machu Picchu in the first place, as I mm -hmm. think it would be the greatest civilization in South America. Uh, probably in the second place, being in South America too, I would go to the Easter Island um, uh, in Chile um, of Moal. Uh, of Moal. And then I would move to uh, China and Jordan as a um, second uh, place. Mm. Yes. So you, you, would, you would do the whole trip, one after the other, yeah? Ah, yes, yes. I would try to go to the ten <laughs> sites. All ten. Excellent. Of course, you would go to the ones nearer to you, which are in South America, in, in uh, yes. Peru, Peru and uh, Chile. Yes. But excellent. Yeah, I like how you formed your your answers and your sentences. You you try to use the the comparatives and and the superlatives. You say, uh, you give a reason. This is what I want you guys to do. You know, when you when I ask you, um, which one of these sites would you like to visit more? It's okay. You can't. I mean, it's it's okay to say, okay, I I'd like to visit, you know, the Easter Islands the most. But it's good to sort of try to elaborate. Try to say why. You can say because uh, it's the closest to me in distance. You can say you know, and try to use think of comparatives or superlatives that you can use. Okay, so what about you, uh, Evgeny? Um, I'd like to visit the first place. Mm. The one in uh, which was in uh, Cambodia. I, uh, I think it is Terracotta Warriors, China. Oh, the Warriors in China, yes. Warriors, yes, yes because it's really interesting how how are they made, was made. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting how they were made, yeah, absolutely. Yes, and the second is, uh, I think, Moa Stages of Eastern Island, Chile. Yes, that's also interesting. I guess for you the closest probably, uh, what would be the closest for you? Europe or China? Um, What's the I closest for you? It's yes, Italy, yes. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because you're, not, you're on the, in the western side of Russia, so you're not far from Europe. <clears throat> yes, maybe Italy is yeah. a little bit closer. Yes. Yeah, it's a little bit closest for you. Okay, uh, thank you, Gary. What about Luca? Yeah. Um, if I have to choose the 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 the, uh, the nearest, uh, I choose Pompeii. But uh, for me, the the best for me. Mm -hmm. Is uh, Moai statues of uh, Easter Island. Uh, I think uh, 
because uh, it is the the biggest, the the most impressive uh, uh, site uh, because of uh, dimensions. And, uh, I I uh, I think I will uh, love Highland to visit Highland. Excellent. That's yeah. very good. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. That was very good. Like your your structure and the the usage of your you know comparatives and superlatives. You use quite a few there. I think about three. Well done, well done, uh, Luca. So let's let's move on to another question. Uh, let's have a look. Which of these? Um, okay. What about this? Which one of these sites, archaeological sites, would you not like to visit at all? Which one, you know, would you not like to visit? So I'm the opposite. Maybe uh, Nazca Lines in Peru, uh, because uh, uh, you cannot you cannot see see it from the the ground. Ah, oh, good point. Maybe. Yes. Yeah. So let's think of some uh, superlatives or comparatives. How can we answer this question using a superlative or a comparative? <clears throat> uh, maybe this is, this site is the worst because of the uh, yeah. because you cannot see from the ground from the ground. Yes. Nice. 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 Okay. What about the other guys? What do you think? Again, Cecilia or Antonio, which one would you like to visit? Or would you not like to visit? Mm, I think Pompeii, of course, because I saw Pompeii. And, uh, oh. uh, and it's not easy having to think of uh, you know, how to form the sentence of the one sign of superlative. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> How can uh, I make a sentence it's over mm. Okay, you could say I'll give you a little clue. Um, uh, the archaeological site which I would like to see the least, right? The least, yeah. uh, like, is a superlative from less. Right. Okay. Less, okay. less, okay, less and, uh, least. So, so yeah, I would so like to see Pomp uh, Pompeii the least. Okay, it's a negative. The least. I would I like to see. It. Like to see it the least. I can say that. Okay, but so I uh, I can say uh, then, that the most less interesting. The, uh, the less interesting, for example, for me, yeah, the least. The least Pompeii? interesting, yes. Ah, okay. For me, Pompeii in Italy is the the, the most interesting uh, site archaeological. Yes, that's it. So you can say for me, the least interesting archaeological site is Pompeii in Italy because because I've I seen it many times. Yeah, I've okay. seen it many times, and you know you can say whatever you like to that. And, um, Anyone else wants to say a sentence? Another sentence? Yes. Um, I don't know, maybe it's not a worst place to visit, but the place, the site that I would like to visit, the List is King mm -hmm. Tutankhamun tomb in Egypt mm -hmm. because I, why? I prefer I prefer to visit the places where um, where alive people <laughs> I don't know how to describe. Oh uh, right, where there's live people. Yes, yes. Don't like I don't like visit. cemetery and things like this. Yeah. Anything to do with death? Yes. Ah, I see. 
Mm, yeah, yeah, it's it's a bit scary <laughs> being uh, somewhere deep in a cave, uh, where there's a tomb, or maybe even in a pyramid. <laughs> it might feel a bit claustrophobic. Yeah, that's a good explanation. All right, so let's move on to another question. Now, which one of these places would be the least expensive to visit? Now, I'll give the question twice. So which one of these places would be the least expensive to visit? I think uh, Cambodia. Ang uh, Angkor what? Because uh, uh, Cambodia is the uh, the less expensive or the the most the cheap country. Ah, is it, do we say the most cheap? What? Yeah. It's a super super cheap. Yes, the most cheap. Cheap? Is that how we say? Uh, Cambodia is the most cheap country uh, in the list. Are you positive? Are you sure we say the most cheap? Okay, give, give me the comparative and the superlative of cheap. So okay. cheap, then um, for example, uh, Cambodia is a uh, is a cheaper than Egypt. Yes, and now that's a comparative. Now, what about the superlative? What happens at the end? What do we do to cheap? Do we say most cheap, or do we add something else to cheap? Mm, I don't know. Uh, you know why? Because get, you see. Because you already said cheaper, yeah, that means you don't you're not using more cheap. Ah, right? okay, so, okay. So automatically you know it's not the most cheap because you added er. As soon as you add er to the comparative, you're gonna add est to the superlative. So it's the ah, okay, cheapest. Ah, cheapest. Okay, so, yeah. okay, understand. So, yeah, 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 you understand now. So keep that in mind, guys. Maybe sometimes you know. Oh, Okay, I know I have to say more pleasant. Yeah. Okay, yes. Yeah, now instead of the pleasantest. No, yeah. you have to say most pleasant. So if it's more pleasant, then the superlative will be most pleasant. If it's uh, cheaper, it's going to be cheapest. As soon as there's no more cheap, there is no most either. Okay? Keep that in mind. Okay, okay. Yep, excellent. So yeah, Cambodia would be the cheapest. Yeah. And you can say why, because it's, uh, um, what else, well, how else could you describe? Well, give us a reason why you think it's the cheapest. It's uh, a poor country. Ah, uh, so what's the superlative for poor? Sorry? What's the su superlative for poor? Uh, superlative, uh, uh, it's uh, the... Um, the? It's po uh, it's the poorest. It's correct. Yes. Poorest. It's poorest. Yes. It's poorest country. Yeah, it would be one of the poorest countries out of this list, isn't it? Out of this these ten sites, where these ten sites are located. Yeah, excellent. Any other um, responses? Anyone else want to say something? Do you agree with Antonio, or do you think there's another place which might be cheaper? Um, I think when it comes to f to to buy a ticket, a uh, flight ticket to another country, um. maybe maybe the Italy will be cheaper, or even e or even Egypt. Yes, that's good yes, point. That's true. Mm. I agree. I yes. mean, from Russia. I don't know how about exactly. Countries. That's a good point. So you have to mention that it depends where you're flying, uh, flying from. Maybe from Russia to Italy might be cheap, or from Russia to Egypt might be uh, the cheapest. You know, but what if you're flying from I don't know from America? That depends again. It might be more expensive. You know. To uh, to fly to Egypt from America than to Italy, so it depends on your location, your departure. You know, yeah, good point. All right, guys, uh, let's see. 
If there are no other questions, uh, I shall, you know, give you a little assessment just to see how you how you're doing. Make sure we're all on the same page. So let's have a look. All right, I'll give you a word. Uh, let's start with uh, Luca. I'll give you a word, Luca. Okay, and just tell me um, <clears throat> the comparative and the superlative of that word. Okay. Okay, so your first word is big. Uh, big, the comparative is uh, bigger, mm -hmm. and the uh, superlative is uh, the biggest. Excellent. Okay, your second one, this is another one for you. Interesting. Uh, comparative is uh, the uh, is uh, more interesting, mm -hmm. and uh, the superlative um, the most interesting. Excellent, well done. Can you give me a sentence using um, either one of those two? Using what? Either you can use uh, you know either one of these two words, big or interesting. And okay. give me a sentence, uh, either comparative or superlative. You can choose. Uh, my, uh, in my opinion, uh, uh, Peru is uh, most interesting than Egypt. Oh, can you repeat that again, please? Yeah. In, in my opinion, uh, Peru is most interesting than uh, Egypt. Mm. Uh, more, more. Ah, that's better. <laughs> I know, I know that you know this. So it's more yeah. interesting when you're comparing more than. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. So in your opinion, Peru is more interesting than Egypt. Excellent. Well done. Thank you, Luca. Thank you. Okay, Geni. Yeah. Your word. Your word is. Funny. What's the comparative uh, and the superlative? Funnier and the funniest. Excellent. Now, can you give me a sentence mm. using either comparative or superlative? Mm, for example, my birthday was funnier than my previous one. Excellent. Yeah, yeah we could say. My recent birthday was funnier. Recent, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then my previous birthday. Excellent. Very, very good sentence. Okay, thank you, Kenny. Uh, Cecilia. Uh, intelligent. A more intelligent, most intelligent. Excellent. Can you give me a sentence using this, please? Um, Eli. Uh, Lisa is more intelligent than Susan. Yes, excellent. And who is Lisa? Who is Susan? Do I know them? <laughs> no, I made them up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you. That's very good, to see, uh, Cecilia. Antonio, you're the lucky last. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, okay. Good. Uh, good is a regular adjective, yes. and uh, uh, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Just think of how would you say, how would you compare something? You'll you'll you remember straight away. Um, no. Think of the books. How do you call the books when they are launched to the market? They are mm, sellers. Yeah, that's a superlative. She's speaking of the superlative. So your car is hmm than mine. Does it ring any bells, Antonio? Ah, uh, yeah, better and best. Uh. Yeah. Best uh, for superlative and better uh, for uh, comparative. Excellent. Yeah, okay. So now, can you give me a sentence, please? Yeah, uh, your your English is better than me, than, than mine. Than mine, excellent. Than and mine. now, what yes. about? Give me another sentence with a superlative. Well, with superlative, let me think. Um, uh, 
You are the best pe uh, the best person in the world. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> okay, that was great. Well done, guys. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you might have a glitch and you forget. Uh, even though I'm sure you know uh, that good, you know, has better and best as a comparative and superlative. But yeah, that's great, guys. Congratulations. You've done very well. Um, do you want to ask me any questions before I let you go? For me, it's okay. No, Everyone's it's fine. Excellent. I'm sorry I took a bit extra of your time, uh, but I thought it was necessary for us to you know, do this before I let you go. So anyways, have a great day. I wish you all the best, and uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the class. Bye, guys. You're welcome.